All right, JoeyRitter.com on Twitter at Joey Ritter. Awesome guest today. Very excited. I got John Bellin from Gene the Werewolf. Great to have you on, John. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm good. Even though we just talked about how we were doing before we hit record, we'll we'll, we'll just we'll just do it again. We're in another world right now. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, Gene the Werewolf, man. I, I'm I'm such a huge fan. I love you know your videos, your songs. Um, you, you just got signed to an international uh, label, Frontiers Records, with the likes of a Rick Springfield and uh, who else? Lover Boys on uh, on the label as well. And uh, uh, what's that? Journey. Journey. Well, is, yeah, that, Journey. is that Journey Night Ranger Asia Six? Now, I didn't. Yeah. I, I didn't know that Journey was on as well. But when I think of Frontiers, I think Journey. <laughs> yeah, they're on there. It's kind of cool. It's like. Uh, it was a really weird situation. It was kind of like we, we had done like our whole thing with trying to get signed in the United States and everything like that, as everyone normally does. And just um, it was kind of weird because it was like a slow process. We weren't really getting too many bites or anything like that. And um, after all that trying, like literally sent our record out to, I mean, hundreds of different labels around uh-huh. here. You know how it works. Yep. And, um, nothing or people would write back with the stereotypical, oh, yeah, we uh, – we don't, we don't have enough time, or we don't have enough time and effort to put into your project right now, you know, whatever. And then literally one night, we woke up the ne- or we woke up the next morning, and my guitar player, Drew, called me, and he said, dude, I got this really weird email, and I don't know how to take it, because it almost seems like it's too good to be true. And I'm like, what is it? He goes, this label from Italy emailed us, and they're, they have on their roster Journey. At one time, they had Def Leppard, and um, he, they're like, Basically, they said they really like their band. We want to sign you. Here's the contract. Like, literally sent the contract to us without hearing a response back. And, of course, we, like, went back and forth. And we're like, what do we do? Is this for real, you know? And we asked a bunch of people that we knew in the industry about it. And they're like, yeah, these guys are legit, man. They, they're, they're the real deal. So we were kind of like, what the hell? Is, how did this happen? You know, we didn't even do anything. And then they, we got an email about it. So it was a really cool experience so they weren't even on your list of uh labels that you were pursuing when you were sending everything out not at all it was kind of like like i said we we heard from these guys i'd never even heard of them before and then like i said it wasn't we actually asked our old manager that used to manage our band uh a couple of years ago and we're like have you heard of these guys are they for real he's like yeah man these guys are legit congratulations that's awesome and it, it even got to the point where like when we were dealing with like our attorney to like uh, negotiate the contract, we wouldn't negotiate it so far, and then the, the attorney would be like, "Dude, I'd take this deal right now." <laughs> We're like, yeah. "Really?" Like he's like, "Dude, this is a sweet deal. Trust me." So it was kind of like it was. It was like a really cool treat for us. Well, b- besides the obvious of you know the opportunity to get your album you know overseas, what are some other like benefits to signing to an international label like that? Uh, I don't know. I, I think that. It's funny because what you just said, I think that's kind of like the main goal of ours is to like get over there and, and tour and everything like that. But um, they're like, I mean, the promotion they've done on the album so far, and it hasn't even, you know, the album isn't even out yet. It comes out this week. Um, it just makes you realize, you know, from being on independent labels before in the past and or, or being on a label that kind of like starts to overlook you a little bit, like the, the amount of work going into this right now on their end, it's just been phenomenal. Like, I've been doing interviews left and right, like, uh, you know, from people in Germany or, like, Norway, and it's just kind of like, I can't believe all this stuff is happening. You know, it's just, to us, you know, it's always been about the same thing, it's about having fun and being able to do this because we love to do it, rather than saying, hey, let's make money off this, you know? It's kind right. of like, and right now we're having a blast because it's just kind of like, at that point where the album gets released and all this attention is being focused on the band. And, uh, so it, it makes you realize that like, you know, all those people out there are like, Oh, you don't need a label nowadays. To be, you know, it's kind of like, yes, this, you do. We're, start, we're Yeah. We're starting to see what being on a label actually does. So it's, it's been pretty cool. What are some of the questions that, uh, the Germans are asking you? Uh, it's kind of like, you know, how did we get our band name? And, uh, you know, um, what was the writing process, you know, in, in recording the CD, and uh, a lot of a lot of people we've noticed that you know overseas have been like, um, yeah, they have a kind of a really weird name, and I'm not sure if I dig the name, but the album's good, 
So yeah. it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, that, that's cool, though. You know, I, I, I'm not, I don't know of one band out there that I don't listen to because they have a weird name. If you, if you really put things in perspective like that, everyone has the worst band name in the world. I mean, one of my favorite bands in the world is Foo Fighters. Horrible band name. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous, I, but they're also one of the biggest acts in rock and roll right now. So I, re- like, yeah, I remember when MTV, uh, you know, broke the story that Dave Grohl had started his own band. And, right. you know, this is without hearing any of the music yet. And, th- and when I said the name Foo Fighters, I remember thinking to myself, like, that is a horrible band name. Yeah, yeah. It's horrible. But, I mean, it doesn't change the fact that when you hear uh, a, a Monkey Run for Everlong, it's like, this is the best song in the world. You know what I mean? I don't care this band's name is Foo Fighters. You know, so. Yeah, with that, I mean, <laughs> the, uh, you know? yeah, the first song, uh, This Is A Call, I think, was their first was yeah. their first uh, breakthrough single. And... You know, once you listen to that song, you get the band name. Like, it just totally yeah. makes sense. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I so this week I checked out the American Music Awards, and, and, and you look at the, the iTunes charts uh, in the U.S., yeah. and you just don't really see, the um, you know, pure rock music kind of in the mainstream these days. You know, there's certainly good rock bands out there, but right. it's really not, you know the top of the list for people this year. Do you think that other countries, um, you know, it, it, it is still relevant. I'm not relevant. not the right word to use, but yeah, I got, I got you. Yeah. Um, I do actually, it's kind of weird because we were talking about this the other day. We were kind of like, it's crazy because like all this cool stuff is happening and like, we could see that the amount of work going into, to our band from the label is like, serious, you know, mm-hmm. and we were actually just saying the other day, like, I, we don't really know what to expect, because this is kind of brand new for us, and um, so I do, yeah, I, I think that it's kind of different over there, I mean, they have a they have a, a scene over there where our music in the United States, what we would normally call, like, rock, or, or hard rock, or whatever, they call it melodic rock over there, Okay. and um, so there's, like, I mean, web pages, there's magazines, all the all dedicated to melodic rock, you know. Um, and I think, you know, I've always heard, even from being really young, that like, you know, rock music is just big overseas, especially in places like Germany, and, and, uh, and you know, just places like that. Like, I've always heard that like rock music or head, especially like heavy, heavy music, is just really big over there. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I think it's kind of different. I'm, I'm actually hoping it's different over there because, like you said, the people that get big over here or do well over here are bands, or I shouldn't even say bands, but, like, people like Justin Bieber, who's in Pittsburgh tonight. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, it's just not that I have anything against any of that because I'm not going to sound, like, salty, but, you know, it's just, uh, you know, to be in a band anymore just kind of sounds like a, a lost art. And I'm glad that there's some parts of the world that haven't forgot about that. So. I hear you. Now, um, y- your uh, single from your new uh, album, "I Only Want to Rock and Roll." I mean, it's such a great video. I mean, just oh. just from the the first thirty seconds with the intro with the 401k guy, and then when you come in <laughs> and the song starts. I mean, it's just a it's just a great video. It's it's so refreshing. To see right. that kind of a video again, you know, I guess it's because it kind of reminds me of stuff I grew up on, right, uh, right, right, with MTV. Um, how was that whole process? I mean, did you know the actors um, that were in the video, or did you have to go through a whole casting thing for that? Uh, ironically enough, the mom, dad, and the brother are actually my mom, dad, and brother. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah, it's actually really them. Um, and I had that whole intro scene planned out for like months even before we discussed doing a video i was like i want to do a video for this song and i want to make it as cliche as the lyrics are to the song like the song talks about you know if i were 13 again and i heard that song i'd be like yes that's what i want to do you know and so i i thought to myself what would i be doing at 13 years old i'd probably be sitting at the supper table talking about how you know i don't care about anything else that's going around or going on around me I just can't, I just want to play music, and that's you know. And my parents, despite the fact that they play kind of jerks in the video, uh, are they love living up to that kind of you know like they, they they're a hundred percent not that character at all you know. So right. when I told my when I told my dad, I was like, you have to act like you're not supportive of, uh, supportive of me at all, and you have to pretend like <laughs> I'm a jerk. He's like, 
no problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was cool, man. They had a really good time doing it, and um, I, I think that even the guys in my band were just kind of like, we really can't picture any other parents like they don't. I can't picture you having any other parents in the video, so why don't you just use your real family? So that's 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 what we did. It's, and, it's... Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to make it that vibe that it was kind of like. The real old school '80s, almost kind of like a oh, I don't know, like you know, it always seems like videos in the '80s always started off with like a little free story, and then the video kicked in. So right. I, I wanted to kind of do that. Yeah. It, I, I don't know if if it was this way with you because you've been playing in bands probably more than half your life. But when you <laughs> first started, you know, your parents are kind of. I guess you're kind of still in a rebellious phase as you're discovering music and writing your own songs for the first time. Right. And, you know, the idea of having them come to a show, you're like, ah, you know, I don't want my parents at a show when you're like 15, 16 years old. But, you know, as you grow up, you know, you get in your 20s and stuff, like, you know, supportive parents are just, I don't know, freaking awesome to have. Like, yeah, they are. When you, you stay know, with I, music for so long. Yeah, I actually came, I, I was actually born into a, like a musical family. So it's kind of like, I was actually forced take piano <laughs> so it was kind of like my parents were actually making me play music and you know I, I can remember just being young and not wanting to go to piano lessons or you know whatever my mom would be like someday you're going to thank me for this so, yeah. uh, so maybe it paid off a little bit I guess but, did, uh, did you thank her what's that did you thank I, her I have I have I told her I said you know those lessons did pay off you know but um, it, it's funny though yeah they've never not been supportive of it it's, it's always been like you know, do your thing and do what you love because that's, that's what matters. Yep. Now, I saw on your Facebook page uh, that you're a fan of the, the movie Teen Wolf. Oh, was, yeah. Was that, you know, kind of where the whole werewolf thing started for you? Uh, it kind of, kind of a little bit, um, especially like when our band used to dress in the white suit. Um, that was very strongly influenced by Michael J. Fox. I forgot Fox, about that. When he goes to the dance at the yeah. end. Yeah. Uh, that's, Really, we were. I was with uh, Nick, our drummer. Uh, you know Nick, and um, we were at H and M one time, and and we saw this white suit, and I was like, dude. He's like, how about if you wore that that on stage? And I was just like, yeah. But the name Gene the Werewolf actually came from a whole different scenario. I think we we developed the character after the name, um, and but the name actually came from you know when I was younger, you know came from a really weird group of friends and we just used to make up names for each other. Names just don't even make any sense, you know. Right, and right. I, I had a friend named, uh, we used to call him the Shrimp Man. Couldn't couldn't tell you why, but we just called him the Shrimp Man. And he used to call me Gene the Werewolf. So when I started writing music for this band, I didn't want to put it under my name. I didn't want to be like, well, this is John Bellin. Because I, I was never a fan when people said that they were like themselves, you know. I kind of wanted to have the band in image, so... I decided to put them under Gene the Werewolf, and then um, the more and more songs I wrote, I decided to play them out, so the band just stuck with Gene the Werewolf, and then we developed the character after that, but Teen Wolf did play a strong factor in that. <laughs> right. Well, it's funny you mentioned that whole uh, story, because when we talked about doing the interview, I said to you, okay, am I interviewing Gene, or am I interviewing John? Yeah. And, uh, you know, if I was interviewing Gene, this this would be a totally different interview, but... Right. Um, Recently, the Punchline guys uh, posted a video of you, you know, a couple of years ago, I guess, on tour. There's a there's a great like three or four minute rant you did about pizza <laughs> delivery. <laughs> I don't think the guys in the in in the van, you know, really understood what you were getting at. <laughs> you know, because I I did the job for quite a while, and oh, yeah. everything you were complaining about about the delivery fee, you know, people asking about it, and uh, how the guy um, ordered food two blocks away for delivery. Oh. I was like, yes, yes, that <laughs> happened to me. Yeah, dude, I I can't tell you the number. I mean, the funny thing about that was when I saw that video again, I thought I I didn't realize it at the time, but um, Chris, uh, who was from the get go. With, that was him sitting across from me, and he was like, he never looked so not into the story. <laughs> <laughs> so when they were playing that back, I was like, wow, man, I just did not shut up. But yeah, dude, 
I have so many pizza delivery stories, it's unbelievable. And like I, t- I tell you, I always tell people, I said that you never realize what kind of people are in this world until you have to deliver them a pizza. That's a fact. But thank God, I don't even do that anymore. I'm, d- I'm done with that and I'm out of my hands. I'm, I'm happy. So. I'll tell you what, uh, if I could make my current salary at my real job delivering pizza, I would do it in a second. I lo- oh, yeah. I love delivering pizza. Yeah. You just drive around listening to the radio all night. Yeah, like, and, and, and uh, you know, there's songs that come on the radio, and, and I say, this is a pizza delivery song. This is a pizza delivery song. Yeah. Like, songs yeah. that remind me of delivering pizza. Yeah. One of them is, like, Everlast, which is a weird song, but that used to come on the radio oh, all yeah. the time when I was I'll delivering. Deliver pizza <laughs> right, right. So, and, and the delivery fee, I actually got caught in a lie. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't lie that often, but um, this guy, you know, I'm delivering his pizza. He's like, yeah, he's like, that extra dollar. He's like, does that go to you? And I'm like, nah, nah, it goes, it goes to, the, to the restaurant, you know. Oh. And uh, he's like, well, the guy who delivered last week said that it went to you. Like, he totally caught me in the oh, line. Really? <laughs> and I was like, well, you know what? He's got different. I got out of it okay. I was like, he, you know, he, he's got different deals with different drivers. I don't know how that works, but I don't get the dollar. You know, yeah. I, I, I well, didn't yeah. back down from the lie. That is, that's, I mean, yeah, that's, that's what people used to say to me. They're like, well, that dollar goes to you, right? I'm like, yeah, it does. They're like, so that's your tip. I'm like, no, it's not my tip. And they're like, <laughs> Well, I don't understand. You know what I always used to say? Swear to God. I used to say, well, put it this way. It costs me more than a dollar to come to your house and deliver this food. So if you don't want to tip me, tip me $2 because actually I'm breaking even then. Right, right. <laughs> so then I'd say, if you want to tip me, tip me like 3 or $4. <laughs> but if you give me $2, I'm just breaking even. So it's really not a tip, you know? Do you remember, uh, like, you know, Friday nights and stuff when there's four or five drivers on and you're kind of splitting up the deliveries and you know which house is tipped the best, you know? Oh, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, and, like, you kind of, you're like, you get the slip of the good tipping house and then you grab all the other slips. It doesn't matter how long they've been up for delivery. You just want oh, yeah. to plan your route oh, yeah. against the one tipping house. Well, there was a guy that used to work with me that used to, he used to want to be, at the end of the night, he used to want to be able to take the most deliveries. And I'd be like, dude, that's, that's not how it goes here. He's like, well, I, that's not very fair. If you, if you have more deliveries than me, that's not fair. I'm like, well, you don't understand. Like, <laughs> you could take five deliveries and get $1, and I could take two deliveries and get three. You know what I mean? It's like, so, but I, I used to let him take more deliveries, and so I would just give him all the ones that I knew weren't going to tip. <laughs> so, so I was pretty, I was a pretty, um, it was a pretty conniving piece of gun. <laughs> I, hey, it's dog eat dog in, in that business. No, but it, the day delivering, I don't know if you ever did daytime delivering, but that's completely different because, like, the businesses, you know, they order, like, 10 pizzas for, for oh, lunch yeah. and stuff. Oh, yeah. And that was always a good one. Now, there was always um, a doctor's office that I had to deliver to, right. and um, it was, like, a, a pharmaceutical rep that oh, okay. would just buy pizza for the office. Right. And, you know, this 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 rep's using like a company credit card and they'd call the credit card number in. And at first I was like an honest guy and I, cause they didn't specify a tip or anything. So right. I put like, I don't know, $3. And then just like month after month that, that number increased steadily to where I oh, was yeah. like putting down a $15 tip, you know? Oh yeah. Were... Yeah. And then there's some, there's some places I've taken, and it's a shame to say this, I don't have anything, but like places like churches, yeah. Like sometimes, like the church choir next door used to order like, like ten pizzas, and then you take it over there, not one cent. Oh yeah. <laughs> I couldn't understand. I'm like, dude, I just delivered you ten pizzas. You didn't even think to give me like a penny. You know, like at least give me a piece. <laughs> yeah. And then there was um, there was a baseball field that you know the owner of the pizza shop, and I get it. You know, he would give them a, a break on on the on the pizzas for the baseball field because you got people from all over the town and it's great right. advertising for them, but I would just deliver it and get right. nothing. And it would take, you know, a good amount to pull in there and go up to the snack bar. Like that's, that's, that's precious yeah, time taken off the clock, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. I totally agree. I, there's, I, I have from now on for the rest of my life, anytime I get a pizza delivered, it's always a good tip on my end. For sure. <laughs> Did you ever, you ever come across a, a delivery where like, it's 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 like a eight year old that answers the door and just gives oh, you. A tour. <laughs> you know what that is, don't you? 
when they can't, when people send their kids to the door, it's to get out of tipping. I know. <laughs> they think that you think, oh, well, they don't know any better. It's like, I know what you're fucking doing. <laughs> you can't feed me. You can't, I, I know what you're up to. <laughs> or, or how about when the total's like nineteen seventeen, and they give you a twenty and say keep the change? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Uh. Well, I was just telling someone the other day, the thing that used to make me the the most mad was if someone I'm just make it easy. If someone if you had like a like a fifteen dollar order, and then someone gives you a twenty, and they're like, just give me back a dollar. Like, dude, you just I mean, honestly, you tip me four bucks for thing. <laughs> Do you really need a dollar back? I mean, right, give right. back a dollar. Well, I'm not going to give him five dollars, but that four is okay. <laughs> Just give me the extra dollar, man. I'm, you know, and that used to make me mad. It's like, give me back a dollar. <laughs> you know, I've I've actually I've done that at the at the haircutting place. Like the haircutting place charges fifteen bucks, uh, and when I give the I, I don't know, like I I think now I give I'd say keep the change, but I don't know, like I don't know what you're really supposed to tip. Uh, yeah. I don't think delivering pizza and haircutting is the is the same you know ratio, right? <laughs> but I, I'd be interested to hear what what I'm supposed to be tipping a, a hairdresser. Yeah, I tip my I tip my barber all the time. Yeah, but see, I go I I don't have like a steady person I go to. It's a different one uh, every time. I got if I had that relationship, it would be different. Yeah, it's a little bit different. <laughs> so, John, have you seen the movie Groundhog Day? Absolutely. Okay, Love it. great movie. Plenty of quotes, but. Uh, the plot of that movie, Bill Murray lives the same day over and over again. Can you think of one day that you had that you would live over and over again? Oh, man. Uh, I guess that would depend on whether it was from a band aspect or if it was from just a John Bellin experiencing life aspect. Let's go with the John Bellin experience. Uh, I guess, I don't know, it's, you're not being graded on this. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think what's going to make me sound cool, actually. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, I, I think that if um, man, that's a tough one. I, I don't know on that. Aspect. Did did, um, did what, whatever the first thing that came to your mind? I was going to say there used to be this one girl that I really, really, really liked. Well, there you go. And. Let's just say, needless to say, I actually had a shot with her for a while. <laughs> so the so one night we hung out, it was really, really cool, and then like kind of like straight and ended or whatever. But um, I'd say I'd like to do that night over again because I th- I do some things differently, you know. But uh, it's not like I'm sitting here dwelling on it. Right, 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 right. From a gene aspect, I would say um, we played a show. Shit, man, I don't know. We played a show with this, with a band from Pittsburgh called the Clarks, and we played this one Christmas show with them. I think in 2010, and it was in front of like 2,500 people, and it was just like wow, the, the coolest night because everyone really, really liked us. And it was just one of those shows that like just went perfect for us. And uh, I'd like to relive that night. We're actually playing with the Clarks again this Christmas, but so hopefully it'll be the same kind of show. <laughs> yeah, and I and I hope there's lots more coming with the new album. Now, John, this is a big deal. Um, I have a new bit here on JoeyRitter.com that I'm going to try out with you. Okay, you ready for this? I'm ready. This is big. Okay. Uh, I I mean I think this is like episode 21 here. So, all right. Um, this is the random 90s generator. Okay. Okay. I've compiled several uh songs movies uh news events pop culture icons um yeah. all it, assembled in this rollerblade here <laughs> and i'm gonna randomly pick one out okay. and you get one pass because you know it might be a movie you never saw um so your random 90s generator of course i crumbled this up really tight for some reason <laughs> but suspense okay <laughs> All right, ready? Do you I'm remember ready. when Anna Nicole Smith married J. Howard Marshall? Uh, maybe. So mid '90s, Anna Nicole Smith. You're familiar with Anna Nicole Smith, yeah, absolutely. Her soul. Um, she married, you know, like an eighty-some-year-old billionaire. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know his name, but yeah, I know who you're talking about now. So what what was going through your head at that time? What? Uh... You know, was it like good for the guy, or were you mad at her for trying to get the money? Um, 
Yeah, that's actually exactly what I said. Well, I wasn't mad at her or anything like that. My the thing that was funny about that was that's kind of like when Anna Nicole Smith was like fat. So I can remember thinking to myself, well, here's this old guy dating like this model that's nice and young. Uh huh. But she's kind of like, like she's like really heavy. <laughs> no, I don't. No, no. I think you're wrong about that. I I think really? that was like when she was at her peak. And then, like, a couple of years later, she had, like, a TV show or something on E, and that's when she right. was fat. Right. You're right. So he got her at, like, the peak time. Okay. Well, having said that, I think I would have probably thought good for him. <laughs> but uh, I th- I'm always the kind of guy that always thinks that's kind of, like, a little bit sleazy, too. Because, realistically, I think a girl that marries a guy for strictly money and mm-hmm. nothing else, I mean... Who wants that, you know? I mean, the guy, okay, the guy's in his 80s, and I'm sure he's thinking to himself, he's not going to find a nice, hot, young girl anyway. <laughs> so right. that's, that's good, I guess. But for a girl that just marries into money, I mean, yeah. I don't need that. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. I hear you. All right, well, that was the first random 90s generator. I think it went all right. I think we'll keep yeah. going with that one. Um I've been watching a lot of Steve Martin movies lately. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, uh, L.A. Story was on TV. Do you have a favorite Steve Martin movie? Three Amigos. Really? That, now, that's a good one. That's a good answer. But, yeah, yeah that's I, that's one I wouldn't think of, probably. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles was really good, too. Uh, but I think, yeah, Three Amigos I thought was pretty good. That's, now, that's the movie that, like, I, me and my brother, just we quote lines from all the time. Right, right. <laughs> But, that, uh, yeah, that's my favorite. Three Migos. We'll go Three Migos. Yeah, because that hit you at the perfect time, I'm sure. You know, yeah. always on cable. or. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, what did you have for lunch today? I had a sandwich. But th- there's this stuff. It's called Buffalo Chicken Breast. And I'm, I've been like, kind of like on a health kick lately. Okay. So, I had... The stuff is it's, it's literally it's deli meat. You go to the deli and it's it's called buffalo chicken breast, and I think it's delicious. My brother and everyone else in my family hates it, so I always have it. Okay, and it's really really good, and it's real low in calories, and obviously because it's chicken, it has like very low fat too. And I had a, I had it on um, light wheat bread with Swiss cheese. Light wheat bread, not just like, wheat bread, light wheat bread. Yeah, it's actually a very healthy meal that tastes great. Uh, but then I also had a Hershey bar. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of ruined it a little bit there. Absolutely. I do that all the time. I, every, <laughs> I always eat salads for lunch and then yeah. follow it up with like a Snickers or something. Yeah. All right. Low, cal- low calorie is the way to go. Just, you know, like, like I said, you, you know, low calorie sandwich is what, what fills you up. And you can afford to eat like a Snickers or something afterwards. Right. So. Now, I'm going to bring back a bit that I retired 10 episodes ago because it got too depressing, but I'm, I have a feeling, I'm feeling it today. I, I feel like you're going to pick a good one. This is the book of questions. It has 200 yeah. random questions. Some are like dark, some are, some are great questions, but um, yeah, I'm going to need you to, to pick a number between 1 and 200, and I will ask you the corresponding question. Let's go with 77. 77. Uh oh, okay. This is a good one. This is a good one. Do you feel ill at ease going alone to either a dinner or movie by yourself? What about going on vacation by yourself? I am the kind of person that I kind of don't like. I'm not. I'm a very family oriented person, and I guess I could say the same with same thing with friends. I do like my alone time a lot. Like, for instance, when I'm here at my house, um, I do not mind being by myself or watching TV or just doing whatever, working on music all day. But when it comes to going out to eat dinner and going to a movie or going on vacation, I don't think I'm the kind of guy that would like to do that by myself. Yeah. I know a lot of people. My there was, I had a couple friends that they would say, oh, I, yeah, I saw that movie the other day. I'm like, oh, who'd you go with? I'm like, oh, just myself. Like, <laughs> Really? Like, I can't do that. I don't think I could do that. Like, so, yeah, on those situations, I have to have someone with me, whether it be a friend, girlfriend, parent, whatever. But, um, 
Yeah, that's a good question, actually. It is because weird I, going I, to a movie yeah. by yourself. Yeah, I like to think of my, I like to think of myself sometimes as a lone wolf. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm not. <laughs> I like to have someone around all the time, company. Yeah, I, I think I like to jump in on these too. You know, um, yeah. you know, JoeyRitter.com. Um, but uh, I, I don't know if I like dinner in a movie seems like too long for me. Like I'd go see a movie by myself, maybe. Yeah. Vacation? I don't know. What could two days be considered a vacation? Yeah, sure. I think I think vacation qualifies as getting away from your normal place of habitat uh-huh. for any amount of time, like longer than a day. Yeah, two days of vacation. Yeah, I, I spent um, two days in Toronto once and just did a lot of hockey-related things, and I was by myself, just walking around the city by myself. Yeah. Awesome. Like, it was yeah. just awesome. Yeah, see, I, I don't think I could entertain myself that well. <laughs> well, that was the thing. At the, at the end of I the second day... I was boring to myself. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the second day, I was... Uh, actually, this, is, this is, ties in, because at the end of the second day, I was kind of like, counting you know the hours till i had to go back to the airport and i ended up seeing a movie by myself to kill time oh okay oh, I'm, well, I can see that. I can understand that. I'm going to admit to you what the movie was and i don't think i, I actually don't think i've ever told anybody this Why? the movie was confessions of a shopaholic i have never seen that but i've i've, I've heard of it i don't you're, i can't even tell you to it. you're really not missing much i don't really recommend it not a, you know, it for what it is, I'm, but it's a very female targeted movie. I felt very right. silly, especially like because I was by myself. At least right. I was, with, if I was with a, a, a girl, I'd have an excuse, but I was by myself. <laughs> and for most people, I'd probably, who's this creepy guy over in the corner sipping on a Coke? <laughs> right. And it, like, I don't know, it was one of those weird movie theaters. There wasn't like 10 movies playing. I, only, I think I only had like two to choose from. But the, and oh. the, the other one was like a really popular Oscar winning movie, but it was really long and I just, I don't know, I wanted something right. less stressful, I think, I don't know. Dude, I don't, hey, listen, I don't care what any guy in the world, if you could get the most masculine guy on earth, everyone watches and enjoys some of those movies. Right, right. <laughs> I, I've actually seen, with the exception of the most recent one, I've seen all the Twilight movies. Oh, really? Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the last one yet. Um, so I'm sure I'll see that. But uh, see, the thing that's good in that for for me in that situation is my wife's brother is into the Twilight movies. So my wife and her brother has goes and you know they go to like the midnight premieres and stuff. Right, right. I, I don't need to be involved. I'm not saying I wouldn't go. <laughs> I but I'm not needed in that situation. My all time favorite movies though are the one the, are the are the like. The really cheesy Halloween movies, which have the stereotypical a group of high school kids that are really good looking and popular go mountain climbing in West Virginia and get attacked by mountain men. You know, like wrong <laughs> turn. You know, I love those movies. Love yeah. Them. And my brother will look at me and be like, "Dude, this movie is terrible." Oh my God, I love it now. So are you? Halloween, so- yeah. Are you talking like I know what you did last summer, or or like a, a B movie that that nobody's seen, like with that plot? I wouldn't necessarily say a B movie. I'm I'm talking more along the line, like kind of like I guess it was a slasher flick. You know what I mean? Like um, there's dude, there's a movie that it's called Satan's Little Helper. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's a terrible movie, but it's great. You know. <laughs> right. All right, John. I, 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 you know, unfortunately, Halloween passed, but I will keep that in mind yeah. uh, for the next Seton's Little Helper. Now we do um, a closing bit on the show called "Turn It Up or Turn It Off." Okay. Very, very simple. I'm going to name you five songs, and you yeah. tell me if you would turn it up or turn it off. I hope I know them. You'll know them. I, I, I uh, pretty safe bets here. All right. All right. Um, and I don't play a clip. Some people wait to hear a clip. I just, okay. All right. Uh, first one is Creed. Can you take me higher? Uh, man, you know what? If there's only one Creed song that I do like, it's that <laughs> song. I, I hate Creed. But that song, I'd say turn it up. You know what? I, I wish I had bells or something, because I totally agree with that. Yeah, I, I like that song. Totally not a Creed fan, but that one, you know, when I, I can I can get into that. I, I You know, I... <laughs> I don't really talk, yeah. you know, tell people that I like it, but... I do like that song, yeah. Turn yeah. it up. All right. 
Uh, Some Nights by Fun. Which one is that? Is that their... That's, I think that's the latest one they have. They just played it on Saturday Night Live. Okay. Um, I'd say turn it up. I, I like Fun. I like Jack. Jack was in a band called Steel Train, and my old band toured with Steel Train before, and Jack is probably the nicest dude in the world, and he's a great musician, and Fun is a really good band, so turn it up. I agree. Um, all right, REM, what's the frequency, Kenneth? I'd say turn it up. I, I like that song too. I don't. I wouldn't say that it's my favorite song. If it was in the car, I was by myself. I'd probably turn it up. Yeah, that was a. I don't know. That was a big change for REM. I thought. I mean, it was really like electric sounding. It was just different. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a cool song. I was very into it. Um, Nasty Boys by Janet Jackson. <laughs> turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it uh, off. I, is, is I know. I've heard that song so many times. That song reminds me of being a little kid and like going roller skating. <laughs> <laughs> just like I don't think I could ever hear myself listening to that song again. But I hear you. That's turn it down. All right, turn it turn it off for that one. Uh, and then the last one is "Head Like a Hole," Nine Inch Nails. Uh, I'd say turn it off. Yeah, it's a. I mean, on good song obviously but it's not my cup of tea i'm not really gotcha all right john thanks again for doing it uh for for doing the show um gene the werewolf cannot stress check this band out the most uh what's the best place to check you out gene the werewolf.com or if you want to add us on facebook which is you know facebook.com slash gene the werewolf and uh that's you'll, you'll get all the information you need on the band right there and that's about it awesome Thanks again, John. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate it.